And now you know the rest of the story. Good evening. How's everybody doing? Oh, I got the 82 here. Ryan actually had it run in here earlier and pulled it out. Had the engine running, got it warmed up. I just pulled the plug on the engine oil. I'm waiting for that to drain out. Caught most of it, but I did have a little bit of overflow. The engine here, I mean, because harvest was terrible, uh, we gotta go through and hit this with the air hose, get all the bigger pieces of residue out. I mean, this used to be called trash when I was a kid. I mean, corn stalks and all that. Oh, there's some of that tar spot that we're never going to get rid of. I was just informed that the other day that tar spot is basically here to stay. That up to 20% of the spores that oh, that we had last fall are going to survive the cold that we had this winter. I mean, I guess they can stand 50 below degree weather, but whatever. Uh, it's just some, another challenge that we as the farmers got to deal with. But I got to go through. Uh, hit it with the air hose, get all the dry dust out that I can, and I'll hit it with the water hose, and I'll get any of the dirt, dust, anything that's stuck in there. Same thing with the 82 and the 70, the 82, the 46, and the 76. Uh, I got to blow the cabs out, and honestly, if we're not really doing too much tomorrow, which I'm expecting to, I, it really just boils down to I got to devote this much amount of time. I mean, that's what it boils down to. I just got to devote the time just to just to work on the tractors. I got everything. All three of those are grease. I got to do the 82. I mean, I literally just started on this one just now, like I just said. But um, things are kind of shifting around here lately. I mean, the sh machine shed has moved yet again. 46 is up out of my way. Uh, the grain carts, all that stuff in there is fine. I mean, really, it is. Got to pull the corn planter out, which is kind of why I want to get all this stuff over here moved out of the way. Get the spreader and the 4020 out and get this wagon either shifted around or maybe backed in out of the way for now and get this the corn planter hooked up and folded out so we can do some maintenance on it. Largely to go through and check all the roller chains, grease everything, check the clearances on the opening wheels, and make sure all the closing wheels are all lined up too. So as far as the way the weather's going, we are looking at about two weeks. I mean, if you guys need me to put a number on it, I wouldn't be surprised that within two weeks, we'll be in the field doing something. I mean, even before that, if you want to count hauling manure, uh, we put bales out the 76 this morning, so it's on the spreader. I had to go through and tighten the web up because the web was hanging down on one side. And when it does that, it runs the risk of catching and breaking the web and pretty much ruining your whole day. So the spreader is ready to go, or at least as ready as I can get her. We have a lot of manure to haul. I'm just really waiting for the conditions to dry up enough where we're not gonna be causing compaction going out through the field. I'm not really one for going out at, what, four or five, six o'clock in the morning and when the ground is frozen and going and hauling for a few hours. Myself, I'd rather just wait. I got enough other things around here to work on anyway to keep myself busy that I'd rather just wait until we can haul for the whole day and you can be a little bit more productive because that way you're devoting at least a whole day or two to, to just hauling manure. So it's, it's, I, think it's, I think that's a little bit easier, at least as far as us. I mean, that way we have the tractor and skid steer either out there or down here, wherever we need to have it. And that way we can just focus on hauling manure rather than getting them out to Ryan's place and then running for a few hours and then having to use the skid steer or the 76 again for hauling hauling bales that are feeding. So it, that's just where I stand on it. So manure spreading videos I'm sure are coming. Um, we got to seed down a bunch of waterways. We got to seed down a bunch of new seeding and that is why the grain drill is currently... Ah! Phone's going off. Just give me a second. Okay, um, yeah, as far as the grain drill being out, I expect to be using it with here within two weeks. Um, that's who just called me. Seed's on its way. I'm not gonna be showing a video of us unloading the seed because I'm just not set up for it. Um, I'll, I'll walk you guys through the, the through all the seed once we, uh, we have it here. It's probably gonna be, oh, probably two trips. So, yeah, 
we got to go through the grain drill, get that greased up and serviced and ready to run. That's going to be on the 4020. 76 will end up on the Harrow again, and the 46 and the 82 will end up wherever they end up. Everybody wants to see the 46, th 40 on on the 630 disc, but I make no promises. I mean, whatever, wherever it ends up, ends up where it ends up. <laughs> so, uh, really, the way where we're at right now on the calendar, and for how nice it's been out, I mean, it's. It's beating last year as far as the start of spring. Last year, the winter wasn't quite so terrible, but it also lasted longer. Because I think we were into the second week of April, and it was just still cold and froze and miserable. Well, Jake break clear right down to the rock bill, so. Yeah, uh, there's gonna be a lot of last minute maintenance going on here, I'm afraid. At least, not necessarily last minute panic, but just last minute where last couple of years we've been getting the corn planter out the first of March and it is coming up on the first of April. It's just that we don't have to do as much extensive work to it as we did the last two years. Uh, the, two years ago we had to put the wiring harness, change the wiring harness out and get it set up for the ag leader monitor and everything. Uh, last year was actually significantly worse. <laughs> it might sound bad saying that. Uh, but we had to set it up for fertilizer and that was a pretty well drawn out process. So we sat's done, the fertilizer works great. I mean, I wish we were putting liquid down years ago. I mean, back before we were even doing solid fertilizer. <sighs> so yeah, uh, it's just like right now, I like to be hauling manure. I should be working on equipment, but the way it's firming up right now, there's a little bit of snow in the banks along the fence lines and everything, but I think not quite so much that we can't get around. Uh, the plan is that hopefully tomorrow, we're probably gonna start taking some initiative and checking fence just to get it done before field work. Last year it was after field work and it just takes twice as long to get it done because then you have to be right up along the fence to see anything. Like right now, before anything is turning green, which the grass is starting to green up just a little bit, believe it or not. And when the brush and everything out in the pastures start to green up, you have to get practically right on top of the fence to see, to see what is all there. So I think we better get back to changing oil, at least before our seed shows up. That right, Calvin? Yeah, who's a good boy? Yeah. If you guys are looking for the, the secret to being a successful farmer, make sure you get yourself a good farm dog. They're good stress relievers. All that right? So I'm going to get back to work. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Take care. Take it easy. Keep in touch. I, I have a pretty good list of things that I want to get videoed here. So I think you guys got quite a bit to look forward to. So until then, so I'll talk to you later.